Hello, everyone. I hope all are back. We will continue the session. So far, we have completed three modules. In the first module, we have discussed the generative AI and uh, the open uh, Azure Open AI service. Second module, we have discussed the <clears throat> So in the second module, we have discussed about the generative AI model, uh, how to consume the, in the applications using SDK and REST. And the third module, we have discussed the prompt engineering techniques. Now let's continue to the next module. The next module that is module four is all about generating code with the Azure Open AI service. So the Azure Open AI service, we can deploy different models like uh, GPT-4, GPT 3.5, Embeddings, Whisper, and many more. But the GPT models you can use for all kinds of text processing, including the code generation. Means if you are a developer, you can make use of this GPT models for increasing the productivity of uh, your code or increasing the productivity of the developer by generating the code, by translating the code, by reviewing the code, by fixing the code bugs, or you can even use it to explain the code. Even though the user is not going to directly use these functionalities, these features already integrated with the many built-in tools like a GitHub Copilot or AWS Code Whisperer, Tab9, and many more. So all these, all these tools are already built or already pre-trained uh, tools or agents that is using the GPT models. For example, if you use AWS Code Whisperer, so that is the AI coding assistant. So, okay, so now it is called uh, the Amazon Q. <coughs> So you can use the Amazon Q, which is an AI powered assistant inside your IDEs such as Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio, or you with the JetBrains and many other IDEs. You can even use GitHub Copilot, which is a Microsoft tool which you can use to increase the productivity of developers. This is also an AI assisted tool for generating the code. As you can see here, we can generate the code. We can chat with the assistant, asking the assistant to explain the code. You can ask the model to generate the uh, functions or unit testing. So all you can do <clears throat> with this, okay. So if you look at, you can 
use this uh, GitHub Copilot for building the applications in less time. So you can see the complete features of this. So behind the scene, it is using the open AI models. Initially in, <coughs> in the previous versions of GitHub Copilot, it was using the Codex model. Codex is a specialized AI model designed for code generations. And now the latest uh, <coughs> GitHub Copilot X is using the GPT-4, which is uh, providing more features uh, compared to the older models. But this is a licensed product. GitHub Copilot is a licensed product. Uh, but Amazon Q is a free product. And similarly, we also have Tab 9, which is also a code assistant tool. We can see this is also a tool that you can use for generating the code and explaining the code, translating the code, and many more things you can do with that. Similarly, many other uh, AI assisted tools available. So if you look at these tools, behind the scene, they are using the open AI's models. For example, if you go to Copilot, this is an extension which is available to uh, Visual Studio Code. Okay, So you can see the features of that. What are the things it can do? It can do the code completions, chat, inline chat, and you can even use the terminal, the slash commands. Okay, so similarly, we can also see the Amazon Q, which is Code Whisperer, which is also an AI powered tool. Okay. A free tier is available. This is also providing the similar features of the GitHub Copilot. Okay. So why I'm telling this because all these tools behind the scene is using the code generation features of the open AI service. Now let's understand what are the things we can do with the code generation feature of the AI models. The first thing we can use the natural language prompt to generate the code. That means we can tell the model what kind of function you are expecting to generate the code. See, I'm going to write a simple uh, application without writing a single line of program code. Okay, I'm going to just describing what I am expecting from the uh, code generator. And let's see how this is going to work. So one important thing which you need to understand is you have to provide a clear instruction to generate the code. And also you can divide the complex operations into small units or small functionalities. For example, here I am going to create a Python Flask application. So I can specify here or maybe um, JavaScript application let's create. Here, I can provide a command like uh, create a uh, express JS application that 
listens on quote 3000 it should have the following endpoints express js api application and it should have the following endpoints like a, a get operation that is for getting the list of employees another one is for getting a single employee and adding an employee and updating employee and then also i want configure the course uh, middleware in express app use mongodb mongo client to connect with the mongo database the connection strings of will be provided using dot env file read connection strings using dot env package start the server on port 3000 so these are the things i am expecting so let's see what it is going to do import keyword i'll use see it's I'm not writing this code, it's just giving the suggestions. Creating the Express app, configuring the course, configuring the middleware, and con selecting the port number, and reading the environment variables. And you can see the configuration of endpoints for so the get operation this is the post operation this is the put operation then it is starting the server on this particular port number see i have not created a single line of code but you can see the complete application is now ready in just a one minute right so it is importing all the required packages and it is creating an express app of or app object configuring the middleware creating a mongo client and using the mongo client inside the api endpoints so all the api endpoints for reading all the employees getting a single employee object adding a new employee then updating the employee and here starting the server so all you can see in a single line of code so i have just explained what is the process i have to do or what uh, kind of application i want to do it's created all these code okay without writing a single line of code right so this is the code generation feature okay so this i have used the uh, built-in tool like a github copilot but behind the scene, it is making a request to the uh, GPT models. So when you make a request, 
you can send a request to the backend uh, API or backend model to generate the code. So you can explicitly write a uh, program code or you can make a REST API request to generate the program code as the response. Next, change programming language and understand the unknown code. So that means if you have one program code, you can tell the model, convert that code into a different language, okay? Or you can even use this model to explain a code which is difficult to understand. For example, in this case, I can, suppose I'm not able to understand what is this process, this function is doing. Okay, I can select this, this right click, so pilot, I can say explain this. So when I say explain this, what it does, it will explain the code, what it is doing. Right. So how this is working and what it is doing is explained here. Okay. Or suppose if I have some code, I can translate that code into a different language. For example, suppose I have a Python function for create a create a function to convert an array of employee objects to a dictionary. Okay, so this is like this. So this is what uh, my Python code, okay, convert, convert an array of employees to a list of Okay, so this is the code which is accepting a list of employees and then converting them into an employee object. So I'm not sure whether this code is completely correct or not, but what I'm going to do, I want to convert. I, I This code I already have, the Python code I want, I have, but I want to generate this as JavaScript code or equivalent JavaScript code. So what I'll do, I'll go to the chat, so here, I can tell the applications convert the below code to JavaScript. And then I'll be pasting this. See that code which I have given is converted into a JavaScript. Okay, this is the equivalent. JavaScript code generated. Can you see the DEF is in Python, which is converted into function. And convert employees to dictionary, that is the naming convention. You can see this is the uh, Python's format, but this is a JavaScript format, right? So uh, here the loop, you can see constant employee of employees. Here it is for employee in employees. That means this is converting from Python code into JavaScript code. So this is the code translation from one language. If you want to convert into another language, that can be done using the models, okay? So I am not writing any explicit code for doing that. If you want, you can try that here also in OpenAI Studio. You can go to the chat. You can say so all the examples I have removed. You are an AI, AI assistant that helps developers to write JavaScript or 
code. So this is the system message. And then I will specify here. And word. Convert the below mode to JavaScript. So this is my Python code. I'm telling the model to convert that into JavaScript. So this is the Python code which I'm going to convert. See? It's created the JavaScript equivalent code. Okay. So that is the response from uh, the model. So this feature they have already used inside which tool? GitHub Copilot. Okay. Or the Amazon Q. So they are already implemented this functionality, which means whenever we tell the model to translate the code or explain the code or do something or if you want to explain the code you can simply say explain the below python code so you can tell the model to explain this code see i'm pasting it here it's giving the explanation of this Python code. Okay, so that is what we are understanding from this. When we use the GPT models, the models can be used to generate the code, or we can use it for translating this code. That means from one language to another language, we can convert, or we can understand the code which is difficult to understand you can tell the model to explain them in line by line we can even complete the partial code this i have already showed you you have to just uh, write the first name of the function then the remaining code it will auto complete right so that is the completing the partial code Writing unit test. Suppose if you want to write a unit test, you can tell the model, okay, can you create some unit test cases, maybe five unit test cases for this function. So simply here, if you are doing it using GitHub Copilot, you can tell the model that select the code and say generate test. So can you see it is suggesting some unit test code? Here is the code. Can you see some sample data? And if they, if this is the assertion. Can you see it is creating a test where with the empty array it is trying then with a sample data this is the original array and this is the expected result and it is executing this so like this multiple text test cases it is writing you can see it five test cases it is writing okay so the, the generating a test case is also very simple. So you can do it through this also. Here you can just uh, paste your code and say create unit test cases for below code. So if I try this prompt inside this. It is creating multiple test cases. Test for a list of employees with the multiple employees. Test for a list of employees 
with the one employee like that. So multiple test cases it is creating. Okay, so that means as a developer, now you don't need to go and write the unit test cases. You can tell the model to generate the unit test cases. It will automatically write the code. And what you need to do is just to verify it, whether because all the AI generated codes do not trust as it is, you may need to make some changes. So you can tell the model, okay, these, uh, these are the changes that you need to make. Okay, so when you generate the code, this code may be 100% relevant or some changes will be required in that. So that you can make. Fix bugs in the code. For example, if if the code is not working as expected, okay, because you are reading the data and trying to uh, store the data somewhere, but unfortunately, you are, while reading the data, I'm getting always null. Or while re uh, reading the data, data is coming, but when you try to write the data, data is coming as empty. Okay, so what is the reason? You are not able to understand what where the where is the error. So you can simply select the function and ask the model, okay, can you fix this bug? For example, here, suppose, um, so here's something I'm just, I'm just putting it here like this. Okay. And uh, let me try to fix this error. Copilot, fix this. Edit generation was not successful. Let's select once again. It's this. I don't know if it's there is some okay. See, it's giving the suggestion that additionally the test dollar test operator in the update one method should be used within with the request dot body object instead of REQ. See, that was the error, right? So I was I have removed that dot body. So now it is saying request object. If you use it will not work. So instead of that, you have to use what request dot body. So it is supposed to sh show the the correct code also, but I'm there is some error. That's why it is not generating the code. But you can see the explanation is correct. The uh, instead of request object, we are supposed to use what request dot body. Here we have to use request dot body. Okay. So similarly, any function wherever there is an error, you can uh, ask the model to. Uh, fix the error. For example, request dot id I'm giving here, and I can tell the copilot to fix this error. See, suggesting that change. Can you see? This is the this is the suggested change, right? That means request dot params dot id need to be created. So here you can see. Request.id should be request.params.id. If I accept the change, you can see it is updated. Right. So the same thing you can do with this also, but here it is not having the complete context, but let's try. Uh, fix the Error in the code. Since the complete code we are not providing, so it will be difficult to difficult for the model to understand the context. But let's try whether it is able to identify or not.
Yes, you can see the error in the code is request.id should be changed to request.params.id in the find one method. That means here, instead of request.id, it should be changed to request.params. So below is the corrected. Here is the corrected code. See, they are giving the suggestion, right? So that means if you don't know or you uh, are not aware where is the error, you can simply ask the generative AI model, can you tell me where is the error? Okay. Improve the performance of this code. So sometimes the developers, maybe the if you are a beginner in programming, you may be using lots of loops, okay, if conditions and many other things to complete a code. But there must be a better way to write the code in few lines of code. So you can tell the model, okay, to optimize the performance of this code. Suppose if the code which you have written is not uh, giving the better performance, you can ask the model to look into the code and optimize it. You can see here, can this function to be more efficient? So you can specify this function and you can see the same operation can be done in just a one line. Okay, so instead of executing a loop, there is an option to do that in just a one line. Okay. So that same thing you can do here. Suppose if I have to test this, means is there any way to optimize this? I will select this code and go to the chat section here. I can specify. Is there any way to optimize this code? So I have selected the code and asking this question. So look at that in this line number 67 to 80. So that is, this is the code 67 to 80 is the code which is selected and that they are providing some suggestions. Okay, use try finally for closing the connection and check if the update was successful. So after the updation, whether the updation has done or not, you can check. Move the database connection outside the route handler. So instead of client.connect here, you can make this connection outside somewhere, okay? So every time we don't need to connect, okay, that here is optimized to code. So if you want, you can insert this code. So it is going to apply that change here. This was, I have selected the cursor somewhere else. Now you can see this method is now updated. So the database connection code, we have to put it outside. Okay, so the client dot connect. Okay, this way. And you can see. Assuming the client is already connected and available globally and then it is doing that operation you can see here that inside the tricat it is doing all the process okay so here it is verifying whether the updation has done or not so you can see how the code is optimized how it was previously and how i have optimized it okay so this is uh, a way we can build the applications very effectively efficiently and in less time, right? So we can create the complete application in just minutes 
okay and what you can do you can create a test cases you can do uh, code optimization you can translate the code you can fix the bug you can explain the code all you can do using the gpt models but nowadays we don't need to go and do this because there are lots of built-in tools available for that like a uh, github copilot amazon q or tab 9 etc so all of them are behind the scene using the gpt models okay so that is the end of this module because this is the last portion of this module so in this fourth module we have seen how we can uh, generate the code or how to optimize the code how to do bug fixing in our code or how to translate the code how to write documentations in code so there are a lot of things you can do with the gpt models so any questions Now, let's move to the next module, which is our fifth module. This is again a very small module only. In this module, we are trying to understand how to use the DAL E model for drawing the images or generating the images so if you see if i have to draw an image we can use the dal e2 or dal e3 models dal e3 is the f efficient model which can generate the images on various sizes and various styles. What you need to do is you have to just uh, provide the prompt saying what to draw. For example, if you have to draw the image of uh, kids playing in the ground or image of a person thinking, any image, you can tell the model to draw it and they will be generating that image for you. But very important thing is, they will moderate your request and the generated response. There is a content moderation applied on these models, whether it is GPT model or DALI model or any other model. There is a uh, what to say, uh, content moderation applied. This content moderation is uh, a default level of security is provided. So what is the default level of security? It will verify whether your request, whether your request does not contains, uh, sorry, whether your request contains any offensive words, which may be uh, violence, self-harm, sexual, or uh, some other offensive words, okay? So in that case, it will uh, deny that request and it will not generate that responses. Whether in case of text, 
or image okay so if you want